Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo, Hobo Technos, Technos product review. EcoFlow has been an innovation machine in 2023, coming out with a plethora of crazy products such as robotic battery-powered lawnmowers, the EcoFlow Glacier DC-powered ice maker, which I reviewed just a few weeks ago, and then this, the EcoFlow Wave 2 portable heater and air conditioner. It's essentially a heat pump in a box with a battery. It operates a lot like a mini split. It's super efficient, sits power, is very quiet. It looks pretty awesome, but is it any good? Let's find out. So here we have the brand new EcoFlow Wave 2, which is vastly improved over the original Wave which came out last year. Now, of course, the biggest change of this is going to be it heats and cools, which the original one only cooled. There's also a pretty big bump in BTUs. The original was 4,000 BTUs for air conditioning. This one will do 5,100. So it's actually more powerful than my window unit I have right there above my head. Now, as for the heating, it's even better. It does 6,100 BTUs. And this one's also much, much quieter than the original. The original was 63 decibels on low fan. It was really noisy, it was one of my biggest complaints. This one is whisper quiet in comparison, especially on eco mode. This has a longer running time. The original Wave could only run about six to seven hours off of its battery. This one can run a solid eight, and I've even seen eight and a half hours. Now the battery in this is larger. It's 1159 watt hours compared to the original one, which was only 1008 watt hours. This new battery also offers a USB QC port and a 100 watt USB-C power delivery output. The new Wave 2 offers vastly upgraded solar support. It now allows from 11 to 60 volts DC input up to 400 watts. That means you can charge this with any 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery system or solar panel. Another cool thing is they replaced the silly dial on the original Wave, which was easy to bump and throw off your settings. And instead, they now have a panel on the top with all push buttons, which makes it a lot easier to use. And it also makes it a lot harder to accidentally change the settings. Speaking of that display, it's a much improved and larger display screen. It's much more intuitive. The Wave 2 also has something that people were complaining about, and that was it didn't have a screen to catch all the lint and dirt. So you can take this off and actually hose it off. It's got a fine mesh in there. You can't really see it, but it's got a fine mesh. And this is for both the front and back filters. It allows to collect all that junk instead of getting it in your heat exchanger. And unlike the original Wave, this is also IPX4 water resistant. That means you can actually leave this thing out in the rain and it's not gonna get damaged. Now that's fantastic if you're gonna use this to cool a tent or maybe you want to put this in the back of your pickup truck bed and have the cool air blow through the sliding window in the back or any situation where this actually might be outside. So and that also goes for the battery. I believe the battery itself is actually IPX65. So that is also water resistant. You can leave this whole thing outside and have no worries. So what comes with the Wave 2? Well, it really depends on if you opt for the battery or not. This add-on battery, I think is kind of a must to have. It will include the little battery connection that goes between the unit and the battery. If you order the Wave 2 just on its own without the external battery, you get everything over here on the side of the table, which is you get, of course, an AC power cord so that you can run the Wave 2 directly off of AC power. I mean, solar generator, your wall, uh, Honda 2200, whatever you want. They also include this template for your window, which is great. Uh, if you have a window that's this small, you won't have to do anything, but you can actually use this to cut the holes in a piece of wood or whatever you wanna do for your window. This is fantastic. I wish they would have included this last time. They also give you a drain hose, which really is only necessary if you're in a really high humid environment. This will, like all other modern air conditioners, recycle the water. So it does have a pan in the bottom where the condensed water will fall into, and it'll splash up on the condenser and re-evaporate in most cases. You can control inside the app how you want this to work. You can tell it to recirculate the water, or you can tell it to dump the water. Now, the original Wave didn't have this feature, so I think that's fantastic. They give you the option to dump the water or recycle it. Now, obviously, 
in a high humid environment, you're gonna use this hose and evacuate the water to a bucket or somewhere external. Of course, they supply these hoses, which click into these adapter plates, and then the adapter plate connects onto the back for this one. I'll show you this again in a moment. And then they have this smaller hose, which is the outgoing hose, and it comes with this kind of plate for the top of the machine. Now they give you this plate as well, this adapter plate. Now this is for hooking up to here. Like say you're in a tent and you wanna leave the whole unit outside, but you want the cold air or hot air from this to blow in a tent. Well, you would use this, and I'll show you it comes right off pretty easily. You put this on and then you put the hose on that and then you run this hose into your tent. That's how it works. You can also use this like in a pickup truck. If you wanna leave this outside and the bed of your pickup truck and you have the sliding window in the back, you can just run this hose in and it'll just blow the, the hot or the cold, depending on what you have it set to, into your vehicle. Now, since this is remote controlled, you don't have to have access to the buttons on. You can do everything through the app and that will allow you to not have this in your vehicle taking up space. That's what that's for. I think most people who are gonna use this are probably gonna use it in an RV or a building or something like that, uh, in which case you're gonna put this on and you're gonna have this click into the top. So here we have the battery on a flat surface. You just pick up the Wave 2, get it so that it slides into the brackets there. There we go. So you just push it until it slides and clicks, and then you release it by pulling this little button up. Now to hook the battery up, you use their battery adapter, make sure the word EcoFlow is upright, and it goes in pretty easily. I think the bottom one goes in first and then you put the top one in, and that's it. You, now you got battery power. Now right next to this is the XT60 solar input, and you can also hook an external battery through this, and this is of course the AC input. If you wanna put the big intake hose on, it's pretty easy. You make sure the button's on the bottom, and there you go. And for the top, it's pretty much the same thing. Bada bang. Then the point is to run the small hose and the big hose outside. So of course you'll need to extend this to reach your window. Right now it's currently 43 degrees outside. I figure that's a good enough test of the heater in this. Now this heater is 6100 BTU. So this room is 160 square feet with an eight foot ceiling and it does have a concrete pad under it. This room right now is pretty cold. I have had no heat on it. I've had the windows open all day trying to get this thing nice and cool. It was a very cold day up here on the mountain. I said, this is gonna be the perfect test. So we're gonna go ahead and heat this room up, but let's look at the current temperature first. So you see there's two numbers here. Current temperature is this top one. It is just under 55 degrees. Now this test is going to simulate you being in a small room like this, which is 10 by 16, or a somewhat medium to large size RV. This will give you some pretty accurate results. Now, if you're using this in a car or a truck or something much smaller, obviously it's going to cool and heat that little space much more efficiently. Um, I figure this is the average user is probably gonna use this either in an RV or a camping, or they're gonna use it for a small room like this. I call it a mini split. I know a mini split's supposed to be two pieces, but it's a heat pump that does both cooling and heating just like a mini split and you stick it in your window. So it's a very unique product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now the room is still 55 degrees. Now we'll be doing this test off the battery. You can see here, I have four lights. Tell me how many lights you see? There are four lights! And I do have the hoses going outside. Now, I don't have the hoses insulated. I'm gonna suggest if you use this in any kind of permanent location, that you wrap these hoses with some kind of insulation. They're paper thin, and I'll show you with my laser thermometer that these get ice cold when you're running the heater, and they get really hot when you're running the air conditioner. So it's just bleeding this back into the room. So you really do wanna keep these as short as possible and insulate them, but this is just a test. I'm gonna set it to 70 degrees. You can see there I have it set to 70 degrees in normal mode. Now you can see on the right-hand side, it says about four hours of battery time left. So we're gonna double check these numbers. Okay, the fan's running at maximum. I have it set to 70 degrees. We're gonna come back in about an hour and see how it's doing for the room temperature. So I currently have the Wave 2 on maximum fan, maximum heat. So we're probably wondering how loud it is. This thing is very quiet. It's very pleasant sounding. Uh, let's see how many decibels it is running at maximum heat from a meter away. 
So 53, 54 decibels, that is not bad at all for something that's got a big fan in it like this and a compressor. Now the original EcoFlow Wave air conditioner caused a lot of confusion because a lot of folks don't understand how air conditioning works. A lot of people thought that the exhaust pipes were actually bringing in air from the outside cooling it and then blowing it out the front. And that is not how this works whatsoever. So how this actually works, since it's a two loop system, is that you have fresh air coming in from outside that goes through a radiator that's basically a heat exchanger. And then that air gets evacuated out the top. So the air's coming in through here, through the radiator heat exchanger, and then it goes back out. There is no fresh air from outside coming into the room. Now the second loop, the air is actually getting sucked in from the room down here and then blown out the top to return to heat or the air conditioning, whatever your settings are. So that is a closed loop. So basically you got a loop here and then you got a loop back here. And these two loops don't touch each other. All they do is they exchange heat from one side to the other. So right now I have the heater running. So it's actually pulling heat from outside, even though it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit, it's pulling heat from outside, passing it to the front, which is blowing it through this radiator and then out the top. So you're not pulling any air from the outside, it's actually heating and cooling the air getting sucked in from the room. I figure I better explain it because there was a lot of confusion last time. We're only 15 minutes into the heating test and we're already up to almost 63 degrees in this room. So this thing is really doing a good job. However, I noticed the discrepancy. It thinks the air in the room is 70 degrees because it's, it's heating it and it's blowing it right out and getting sucked back in. Uh, so it actually says the ambient room temperature is 69 degrees. So it's actually 63 degrees. That thing is 69 degrees. So what I had to do in order to keep the heater on was turn it up to 74 degrees. Now it's not gonna use any more energy, basically just allowing it to heat the room up higher because I wanna see if we can get this room to 70 degrees in the next 45 minutes. So you can see right there, it says 69.9 degrees. So I turned it up to 74. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do for this test just to make sure we can heat this room up? I'm gonna put it up to 76 degrees, which you can do remotely, which is kind of neat with the app. Okay, we're back, it's been an hour. Let's see how much the temperature went up. Top number says 65.7, so almost 66 degrees. That means the wave two increased the temperature of this room 11 degrees in one hour on maximum. Now let's see how much battery it used. Okay, battery used is 65%, says right there. So it used one third of the battery in one hour to heat this room 11 degrees. That is on maximum. There's no economic mode about this. If you want to warm up an area quickly, you want to do it as fast as you can. Now if I put this in eco mode, it would still warm the room up, but it would take much longer. Now it does say right here, 2.3 hours of battery left in this mode. One of the cool things about the Wave 2 is the fact that it can run directly on DC power from other EcoFlow products. I have a EcoFlow Delta 2 here, which actually has the battery hookup in the side, and it's going directly into the air conditioner. So it'll power directly from DC via one of the other EcoFlow batteries. Now, in this case, this is the EcoFlow Delta 2. I can actually use the Delta 2 battery, uh, the Delta Max battery, and this will also work with the Delta Pro and Delta Pro Smart battery, as long as you use an adapter, which is, this is the adapter right here. What this is gonna do, it's gonna allow us to see how many watts exactly is the Wave 2 pulling, because there's really no way to know how many watts it's pulling unless you do this because there's no way to measure what's going between the built-in battery and the air conditioner or AC and the air conditioner because there's a big conversion loss when you're plugged into AC power. We don't really care about that because I think most people using this is gonna power this off of solar or they're gonna power it off of one of the other Delta products. So let's first of all find out how much power it uses in a different mode. I'm using this one because it's one kilowatt hour. It's a thousand watt hours. It makes the math very easy for both me and you to understand. And we'll see how many percent. So first let's go ahead and see how much power it pulls on max heat. I've been running the Wave 2 for about 10 straight minutes on max mode. I wanted to make sure that it was at its peak output. So this is at its peak output. The room is definitely getting warm at this point. See right there, it says 388 watts, and I've seen it go to 390, and it's never went higher than 390. 
So 390 watts to run a 6100 BTU heater, that is excellent! Now just for S's and G's, I'll go ahead and plug the Wave 2 through AC power into this and we'll see the difference. How much do you lose using AC versus direct DC battery? So after running it for about 10 minutes in max mode, we have topped out at around 431 watts running off of the AC inverter instead of the battery. So it was around 385 watts running it directly off the DC port of the battery compared to about 430 watts running it directly off the AC inverter. So that 45 watts is basically lost into the universe due to the conversion from DC to AC then AC to DC to run the air conditioner. So obviously it's significantly more efficient. Now I'll go ahead and put the percentage difference at the bottom of the screen so you can see what 45 watts out of 385, how much more you're actually wasting by running this off of an AC inverter. So what about eco mode? If I put this thing in eco mode, how much power does it use? Well, I've had it running in heater mode at 74 degrees in eco mode for about 10 or 15 minutes now. You can see it's using only 228 watts, so that is pretty good. It's still pumping heat out. Now this is with the direct DC to DC connection. This is not using the AC inverter, so it's gonna be the most efficient method. So you can see right here, it says it's gonna run four and a half hours on the 1000 watt delta. Now it says it's only gonna run for four hours off of the 1000 watt delta too. So let's just come back in four hours and see if it held temperature and how much battery is left. I have it in heat mode running in eco. It's much quieter. How much quieter? 47, 48 decibels is whisper quiet. Okay, we're back. It's the next day, mid-afternoon. It's approximately 80 degrees outside, and it's almost 79 degrees in here. I just kicked the Wave into max air conditioner mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for two hours off its own battery to see how cool can it get this room. So the coldest this thing will do is 60 degrees. Let's hope that it gets at least into the 60s in the two hour range. And we'll also see how much battery it uses. So you can see there, it says room temperature is about 75 degrees. It's set to 60 max. And it says the battery is gonna last about 3.2 hours. So we'll be back in two hours and see how it does. Okay, it's just over two hours, about two hours, 10 minutes. And we're back and here is the result. See the top number is the current room temperature. It's 65.7 degrees. You can see there it thinks it's 64 degrees in the room. The air conditioner is set at 60 degrees on maximum and it has approximately 32 minutes of runtime remaining on the battery. So pretty impressive result. It cooled the room by 14 degrees. And that's just in a hair over two hours. And it did use most of the battery, unfortunately. It used about three quarters of the battery to cool this room down. But you have to remember, this is on max mode. It's no holds barred. There's no energy efficiency involved. It's just trying to cool the room as fast as possible. So let's do an efficiency test next. So you might be wondering just how loud is it on max air conditioner mode? This is full fan, full blast, no holds barred. So around 55, 56 decibels, which I think this is the loudest mode. This is louder than the heater, it seems like to me. So max air conditioner, it seems to make a little bit more noise. 56 decibels is still not bad at all. It's not anything that would be like too annoying. And you can also just turn the fan speed down if you think it's too loud. Let's see what happens if I just turn the fan speed down, how much quieter it gets. 47 decibels, huge difference in sound. So. If the high fan speed bothers you, just turn it down. There's three settings, low, medium, and high. So you can expect this will not bother you at all on low in case you are extremely sensitive to sound. It's a steamy day here on the Hobo Stead. We actually had mid 80 degree temperatures today. I left this curtain open so the sun came shining in. We're up to 88 sweltering degrees inside the lab and that's gonna be for our next air conditioning test. So you can see there we're at 88 degrees. Now, because you see this blue light, it means we're in air conditioner mode. So I just kicked it up on max mode. I'm gonna show you what the ambient air temperature is coming in from the outside. Okay, so it's 83 degrees outside. At least that's the temperature of the air coming in. So we're gonna see how long does it take for this to get the room down to, let's say 68 degrees, which is a comfortable 
temperature in a room for air conditioning. So we're at 88 degrees. Let's see how long it takes to drop it 20 degrees. We're only gonna see how long it takes on max mode, but we're gonna see how much power it takes from the Delta II. So right now it's pulling 450 watts DC from the Delta II. I just wanna make it clear, this is DC to DC or battery to battery. We're not using the AC input. We're gonna see how many DC watts it takes and pretty much how many watt hours it's gonna to take to cool this room down 20 degrees. I got the clock, it's a little bit after two. The air conditioner is taking a pretty good amount of watts on maximum, so around 450. Okay, we're back. It has been two hours and 20 minutes. That's all the longer that the Delta II battery ran before it died. It killed the 1,000 watt hour battery in the Delta II, but it did manage to bring the temperature in the room down. It did bring the temperature of the room down to just below 70 degrees before the air conditioner shut off. So this is the temperature tracking of my Inkbird thermometer and it does show right here, it got a little bit of a dip. It took it just down to 70 degrees and then the air conditioner shut off and then of course the temperature went back up again. So it looks like a thousand watt hours will cool a room from 88 degrees to 70 degrees in approximately two hours and 20 minutes. Now, of course, if I had a bigger battery like the Delta Pro or even had the extension plugged in, I could actually get this room down to 68 degrees, no problem. The air coming out of this is like 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means we have one final air conditioning test to do. I'm gonna go ahead and run this for two hours on eco mode, and we'll see how much power it uses from the Delta II battery. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on eco. Now, I really don't expect this air conditioner to drop the temperature that much in here with eco mode, but we're gonna do it anyway and just see how much power it uses. So check this out. We've only used 29% of a thousand watt hour battery or approximately 290 watt hours to run for two hours on eco. Look at how low wattage this thing is pulling right now. It's only pulling 200 watts. So you can see here I had it set on 68. It thinks the ambient room temperature is around 70 degrees. It says you still got about four hours of battery time left, which sounds about right. Now, unfortunately, this hose is actually pretty hot because it's taking the heat from this room and throwing it outside, but through this paper thin hose. Let's see how hot the hose has gotten. That's no surprise, 95 degrees. So yeah, if you're gonna put this in any kind of permanent installation or even semi-permanent installation, you're gonna wanna wrap, especially this top hose. The bottom hose isn't that big of a deal because it's drawing in air from the outside. This is the one that's gonna get super hot or super cold depending on what settings you have on here. Now, one of EcoFlow's claims is that the add-on battery for this can actually run the air conditioner or heater for up to eight hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get this to actually say it will run for eight hours off the battery. So I know in the original Wave, there was a little trick you can use by setting the timer, it will lower the compressor level and extend the battery life up to that amount of time. So if you set the timer for six hours, it would just run the air conditioner a little bit lower to make it the full six hours. Now I'm pretty sure this works the same way, but this allows you to set up to eight hours. So let's try that. It is set at 66 degrees in eco mode, and then you can just hit the timer button. Then you'll see you can scroll all the way to the end, select eight hours. So right there on the screen, it says eight hours. And just like magic, it says 7.9 hours right there. So it's saying that at the current temperature eco compressor rate, it'll actually run for eight hours. Now granted, that is at the lowest setting. So it says right there, the air coming out is a very chilly 39 degrees. That's really cool, pun intended. So let's go ahead and turn the timer off. Amazing enough, it says eight and a half hours. So we actually get more runtime by not using the timer trick. So now we see the timer feature is exactly that. I can set it to two hours and this thing will turn off after two hours. That's the way it should work. You shouldn't have to use the timer to trick the battery to run longer. So now I have my variable voltage charger plugged into the XT60 solar input on the Wave 2. So we're gonna determine how fast can you charge this battery with varying voltages, meaning 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, 48 volts, and 60 volts. And that will let you determine, I'm also gonna simulate a solar panel on here, so we'll get an idea of how fast it charges with solar. 
Now my variable voltage charger will output up to 20 amps, so way more than the wave can take. Right now we have it set at 12 volts, it is taking exactly eight amps. So in order to figure out how many watts that is, you take 12 times eight and you get 96. So at 12 volts, the wave two will pull a maximum of 96 watts. That makes sense because if you plug the wave into a cigarette lighter on a 12 volt vehicle and it pulled more than 10 amps, it's gonna blow the fuse. So they almost all safety down to eight amps. So let's bump this up to 24 volts. So say you have a 24 volt vehicle or a 24 volt battery that you want to charge the wave with. So we're up to 24 volts. We'll let this equalize. It equalizes at eight amps. So basically we just double what we had before, 192 watts. So at 12 volts, how long will it take to charge the wave two battery from dead? Well, the wave two battery is approximately 1100 watt hours. So you take 1100 divided by 96, it'll take approximately 11 and a half hours to charge at 12 volts. Now at 24 volts, it'll charge twice as fast. So we can divide that by two. And so if you have this hooked up to a 24 volt vehicle or a 24 volt battery, it charges in about 5.7 hours. Now, if you're one of those people that actually have a 36 volt battery bank, you might wanna know how fast will it charge at 36 volts? 36 volts, again, limited to eight amps, 288 watts. So you can charge the wave two from a 36 volt battery at around 3.8 hours. Let's bump it up to the most popular. Most people are gonna either do 12 volts or 48 volts and probably not anything in between. 48 volts is a very popular voltage for off-grid systems. So if you have an off-grid battery, such as the one I got down here that you can't see, you might wanna charge it with a 48 volt battery. So let's see where we get to there. Now it actually bumped up to 8.4 amps, 403 watts. So how long will it take to charge the battery at 403 watts? It'll take about 2.7 hours. That's gonna be as fast as the battery can charge because it's limited, hard limited to around 400 watts. Let's take this up to 60 volts, which is the peak. 60 volts gonna allow you to run any solar panel you want. I don't think they make solar panels VOC over 60 volts. So you can use one large four or 500 watt residential panel to power this. And that's probably exactly what I'm gonna do. I have a 450 watt Renogy I'm planning on running this off of that. So that should work quite well. So since we already hit the 400 watt limit, we take it up to 60 volts, it now drops the amps to 6.8, and that gives you 408 watts. Now seeing that the Wave 2 only uses around 200 to 250 watts in eco mode, that means you can actually run this all day long for free off of a single 400 watt solar panel. That's pretty fantastic. It also means you can hook up external batteries of any voltage up to 60 volts to charge this thing. So unlike the original Wave, which only allowed 12 and 24 volt charging at only 200 watts, which was really lame, they doubled that and expanded the voltage up to 60 volts, meaning now everybody should be happy that you can now charge this with whatever 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery system or solar panel that you dang well please. All right, your next question might be, will this thing run directly off of a solar panel or an external battery without the EcoFlow add-on battery for the Wave 2? So in order to test this, I do have my variable voltage charger set at 48 volts to simulate a 48 volt solar panel or 48 volt battery bank. It is running at eight amps. Plugged into the XT60 connector. I do have the battery junction cable here, which allows the external add-on battery to connect to the air conditioner, and that provides the power for the heating and air conditioning. Right now I have it set on heat on eco mode, so it's not using a lot of power at all. I'm just gonna pull the battery cable out and see what happens. So let's go ahead and pull it out. Okay, immediately it switches to fan only mode, so it looks like it will continue to run, but only in fan mode. It doesn't even allow you to switch modes. As you can see here, I can press this mode button, nothing happens. In fact, if I press this button, nothing happens either. All I can do is change the fan speed. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I was really hoping that they would allow customers to not purchase this battery and still run off of their own 48 volt battery bank or large solar panel directly. So no, unfortunately, you can't use the heating and air conditioning features if you're powering it directly from a large solar panel or from any size battery bank. Now, of course, this is in their own best interest because they want you to purchase this extra battery. 
Fortunately, it's only a couple hundred bucks more, so it's not that big of a deal. So if you do want to charge with an external battery array or external solar panel, just get the add-on battery, it'll allow you to do it. So what do I think about the new and improved Wave 2? Well, let's just start with some of the Debbie Downers first. First, you can't charge the external battery here without the main head unit, and you can't charge it from battery to battery, meaning if I have a Delta 2 or a Delta Pro, I can't hook it from the battery connector to the battery connector to charge this battery. It just doesn't allow you to do it. it. doesn't make any sense. So you're pretty much forced to charge the battery while it's attached to the unit, and while you have this battery hookup in place, you can charge it with either AC power or you can charge it through the XT60 solar input, which will also take an external battery. So you can charge it with solar, you can charge it with an external battery, but you can only do it while it's hooked up to the main unit. Something else I thought was a little bit weird is this hose design coming out of the top. Now the original Wave had two hoses coming out of the back, which would go into your window, and I kind of like that design. I wasn't really quite sure why they did this until I looked at their manual. Their manual actually shows a picture of this template being horizontal to the window, meaning they're expecting you to put the hoses in this way instead of putting the hoses in this way. Now, I, my window only slides this way, so I don't have a choice but to put it in vertically like this. But they kind of expect you to install it horizontally, I guess, in most windows. So what that means is that you can actually turn this thing sideways, you have the small hose going into the small hole, and you have the big hose that would go into the big hole, and then it would go sideways into the window like that. And then you can keep this sideways on a table. Instead of it facing outward, it's facing sideways. I guess that was their reasoning that they came up with for having the weird, looks like a smokestack from a coal-fired plant sticking out the top. It's a little bit weird, but I kind of get it after I saw the user manual and how they expect you to hook this thing up to a window. EcoFlow does offer a one-year warranty on this product, but I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't offer a longer warranty that's competitive with their other solar generator products. Now, besides those few minor quirks, I absolutely love the Wave 2. In fact, I like this thing so much, I'm considering building a shelf over here and installing it semi-permanently until I get a mini split because I'm burning tons of money, especially in the wintertime, running electric heat in this room when I should have something like this, which would be much more efficient, save me a lot of money. Now, one of my biggest likes about the Wave 2 is the fact that it can now be recharged with enough solar to keep it running 100% of the time for free as long as you have 400 watts of solar coming in. And the fact that you can use virtually any solar panel you want, double thumbs up. You can also finally charge this thing with a 48 volt external battery, which is friggin' epic. It's also whisper quiet in eco mode. I have it running in eco mode right now on air conditioner mode. You can barely hear the thing. Even on max mode, it's not that offensive. It does fast heating and cooling and switching between the two is very easy. You can set the temperature and do all this remotely via app anywhere on planet Earth. And you can even see the room ambient temperature, which is great if you're using this to keep your pets comfortable in a vehicle or an RV. So what about that price? I know that's going to be your biggest question. Now you have to remember this is EcoFlow. They love to innovate. But that also means the Wave 2 doesn't come cheap. Now, the bare unit without the battery, I'm talking about just the heat pump unit, goes for $9.99. And with the battery, it's $11.99. So I think it's a no-brainer just to get the thing with the battery because it opens up a lot more options. Now, before the armchair warriors start freaking out on their keyboards and telling me that they can actually buy an off-brand one-ton mini split for this kind of money, don't forget a few very important facts. This one is truly portable. Requires no special installation or vacuum equipment to put into place. It can run entirely off of solar. You could take it with you camping, use it in your vehicle, RV, or tent, then bring it home and use it in your shed or your spare room. And since it has its own battery, you can cool or heat any small area quickly with very little power. You can take this compact unit along with you on its own battery and a solar panel for a truly portable HVAC system 
that's mini split efficient. And since this thing is remote controlled through the app, you don't even need to get out of bed or out of your seat to change the settings. Now, those of you with the EcoFlow Delta Pro, Delta 2, or Delta Max, or their respective external batteries, can plug directly into the Wave 2 for super extended run times. Of course, these units take tons of solar, so you can easily run indefinitely off the grid at virtually no cost. This makes the Wave 2 extremely versatile, and that's what you're paying the premium for. If the Warriors still feel like leaving me a comment saying they can buy an air conditioner at Walmart for 99 bucks, feel free, but you're totally missing the point. So if you're interested in the Wave 2, the link is going to be in the description of this video below, along with the discount code that'll knock a significant chunk off the retail price. I'll also put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually, along with a QR code that you can scan, and it will take you on over to the EcoFlow store page where you can check out the Wave 2. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Now, I just want to give you an FYI that I'm probably going to release this video a bit before the Wave 2 actually goes on sale so that everybody gets a chance to watch this before pulling the trigger. I expect this is going to be a very hot item for the summer, and I wouldn't be surprised if this thing sells out eventually. I'm also planning to do a separate video showing the Wave 2 charging with an actual solar panel. I'm going to use my big 450 watt Renogy for that, and I'm going to show it charging from different voltage of batteries. This video just got way too long to include all that. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you will be notified when that follow-up video posts. I also suggest you go to my website, hobotech.tv, click on the word blog, and enter your email address there in the blank space, and I'll send you an email anytime I post a new video. I actually took a recent poll that says up to 35% of my viewers are not getting YouTube notifications. So if YouTube's not going to notify you about my videos, we got to take it in our own hands. So make sure you go to hobotech.tv, click on blog, enter your email address. Anytime I post a video, I post a blog. That blog will automatically send an email to everybody on that list. I'm not going to spam you with anything else. It's just about watching the blogs and watching the videos. Alternatively, if you don't use email or don't want to go that route, you can go over to our Facebook group called the Hobo Tech Crew. And I also post in there every video that I upload gets a post there on our main page. So links for all that is going to be in the description of this video. Tell me how many lights you see. Yeah. Oh. Four lights! RV Golf Guy, Brian Lee, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, August 2000.